Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today, I wanna to walk through actually flattening a bench top. Uh, now, in this case, I'm actually flattening a bench bottom. We weren't going to do this, this is my wife's bench. Uh, however, um, I, I really wanted to do the video showing how to go through the whole process. So rather than just doing the spot flattening that we were gonna be doing, I'm actually gonna talk through how do you go through all the steps of flattening a bench. So let's dive into that. Initially, with my wife's bench, we were going to leave the bottom rough, as I normally do that with most of my benches. And all you have to do is then flatten the area that the leg touches and make sure that that is parallel to the top of the bench. Works fantastically, saves a lot of time, and you really don't need the bottom to be flat. However, I want to do the video actually showing this. Now, this bench, because we did a speed glue up with PVA and did it all in one, uh, there's actually a large twist to it. All of the boards shifted while it was gluing up. And so that means this corner and that corner are very high, and this corner and this corner are very low, so we're gonna have to take off a lot of material. We're gonna have to do some work on this. So the first thing I wanna do is actually assess this and figure out where is it flat, where is it not, and what all do we need to do that? And for that, winding sticks. Normally at this point, I would set two winding sticks on here and take a look at it. But the problem is that you really can't set winding sticks in any one place. They, they wobble everywhere because there's a lot of glue on top of this. So I'm gonna have to do some very quick initial flattening in order to get good winding stick placements. And then we'll actually figure out where the twist in this board is. So let's flatten out a couple of those spots. So I'm looking for there. Bump in there. Ooh, that's a big bump in there. So now I have some winding sticks and I have solid locations for it. I have three locations across this. And you can notice, you're gonna see a lot of this sticking up above it and it tapers down to something even there. So what I can do is lift this stick up until they are pretty close, and that's relatively close there. I've got almost three quarters of an inch here underneath the board, and so that means I would have to remove three quarters of an inch here to make this equal to that. And because that side is also twisted, and this side is twisted the other direction, that means I can take half of the material off on this corner and half the material off on that corner. So with winding sticks, I can see that the whole board is twisted, and I would need to take off three quarter inch, or in this case, three eighths of an inch there and three eighths of an inch here in this corner. But then in the middle, I can put this on there and I can see it's about half of that. So if I were to adjust, it'd be about three eighths of an inch. So in the middle, I need to take off about three sixteenths all the way across. So theoretically, this corner and this corner, I'm not gonna touch them at all. In the middle, I'm taking off three sixteenths all the way across, and the outsides, I'm taking three eighths on either corner. Now that's all mathematical head knowledge and we don't really need to worry about that. Right now I just need to know I need to take off more on this corner because it's high and more on that corner because it's high. Let's get with those. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in with a scrub plane and this has a very large gullet on a big mouth on it and this will allow me to take off a lot of material very, very quickly. Now I also have this, which is a number five, which also has that big mouth and big gullet, but because it's wider, it doesn't take off quite as deep a cut. So I can use this to kind of come up and clean up a little bit left over from the scrub plant. And what you'll notice is that this hits the high spots and will allow me to just focus on what I want to get rid of. It's not gonna leave a clean surface, but it will get us down to a flattish finish. And so this allows me to get a lot of material off very, very quickly. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to traverse the board. I'm gonna go at a 45 degree angle all the way across the board from one end to the other. except for this corner and this corner back here. Those two are the right height, so I'm not gonna to touch those. I'm staying away from this corner, and I'm staying away from this corner. I'm just gonna traverse everything in between. Now I've traversed the whole top all the way across, going in this angle 
all the way across except for those low corners. Now, I know I really didn't adjust the twist. I just took off all of the glue and the mess on the top. So I'm gonna come back in with the winding sticks and make sure everything's where I think it is. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna traverse the opposite direction, 45 degrees at 90 degrees from what I just traversed. And that will allow me to then focus on some other areas. And I want to particularly focus on the spots that are high and see if any other spots are getting down to about the same thickness as the low spots. We're still twisted. This is still a high corner and that's still a high corner, but now it's only about three eighths of an inch or so as opposed to the full three quarter inch. And so because of that, it lets me know I've gotten rid of a lot of the high spot on both those corners, but I still need to focus on those a little bit more. So we're going to focus on these corners and we're going to get one strip at either end flat and parallel before we start working on everything in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, it's more like it. So on this end of the board, I'm gonna try and level out this much of the board to be parallel with the other end of the whole bench. So I'm not gonna work on the whole thing, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna take a lot here, I'm gonna take several shavings that are just this long, and then I'm gonna take several shavings that are just this long, and then I'm gonna take several shavings that are just this long, and several shavings that are just this long, and then I'm not gonna hit this area over here because this is my low spot. So now we are really, really close. Still a little bit out, but only like an eighth inch or so. It's actually really close, I like that. So here you can see now they're pretty much dead on flat. This is where I want them to be, but it's just a strip at this end and a strip at that end that are now parallel and twist free. So now I have a strip at either end that I know is twist free and exactly where I want those to be. So I'm not gonna hit either end. There's about three or four inches at either end that's exactly where I want it to be. Now I can grab a straight edge and I can put that on there. And normally if I put the straight edge on corner to corner with the twist, it's not gonna tell me if there's any problems. But now that I have straight edges at either end, now I know that, ooh, I'm high here. So I gotta remove a lot of material here. I put it over there and I'm high over there. So I gotta remove a lot of material over there. And the straight edge becomes a very quick and easy way to then see everything in between those. As long as one end of the straight edge is on this strip and the other end is on this strip, I know what needs to be removed in the middle. Things are about to get serious. Okay, I've gotten this strip here right along the edge pretty close. I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna see a large amount of light here, large amount of light here, it's touching here, it's touching here, it's touching here, large amount of light here. So if I tip it, there's a bit of a rock. So I know where it's touching, I need to hit this area here. So I can focus on just the areas that need to be hit and not hit the areas that don't need to be hit. And in some of these cases, I'm actually gonna be going with the grain because I wanna cover a longer area so it's easier to go with the grain rather than across and then just that small area. So now I have a perimeter all the way around the outside of this that is flat. I know that this end to this end are twist free. And I know I got a straight edge from this corner to this corner, a straight edge from that corner to that corner. It's just this middle area that is now pillowed up. And so now I can focus on just hitting that. And it's fairly easy to do that now with a scrub plane or with the four plane in this case, I can start a little ways into the board so I'm not touching this outside rim. And I plane across until I'm not then taking any shavings because I'm removing the material here 
without actually going off the far side over here. And eventually the plane is always going to be touching one side or the other rather than sculpting it out. So this just goes a little bit faster. So I'm going to do that 45 degrees one way, 45 degrees the other way, and take this all down. So right here, from outside edge to outside edge, it's pretty close. It's still a little bit pillowed right there. I can move it over a little bit more. Now we've got a pretty heavy pillow, and I can rock this from side to side. And I know my high spot now is here. So I'm gonna grab a pencil, put a little high spot mark there, move over a little bit more. In this case, I still got the high spot here. Move over a little more. It's the high spot here, right along that board. A little more. Still in the same spot. A little more. Now we got two of them, right here and right here. And over here, high spot's right there. And then all the way out here, high spot's right there. So now I'm just gonna hit these high spots, which are these boards right here and this space up in here. But Now it is touching all the way across, pretty close, all the way that way. I'm going to turn it at an angle and check that way. And we got a little bit of a high spot right there, nothing major. Try the other way. I'm going to put it right back on that same high spot. Yeah, still a high spot that way. So I just got that one little spot right there. And uh, I'll just do this. Let's see how it looks now. Yeah, see that's better. Cool. So you can see it's now flat, but it's not smooth. And so we want to get rid of this. Now I'm going to use a little bit longer plane so that I can maintain flatness, but with a big mouth on it. Now that we've scrubbed this all flat, I'm going to bring in my number seven. And this will maintain flatness, but it has a very large set on here. It's a deep cut, it's a big mouth. And this will allow me to get in, make it a little deeper here. And this will allow me to get in, it just hits the high spots. Because as long as this is touching a high spot and this is touching a high spot, the blade won't be cutting anything. But if the blade is the high spot, then it will cut things. So I'm going to go through this. And I'm just going to let it hit the nicks and get this thing down to flat. And you can hear how it's hitting some spots, and it's not hitting others. Just kind of skipping across the top, and it's just hitting the high spots. But it's getting it smoother. And so I'll do it 45 degrees one way, 
then 45 degrees the other way. I'll probably come back and do it 45 degrees the other way. Four or five passes total. Until we get it down right. Now, after doing a few passes with the number seven, we're gonna bring this in here, and I just wanna put it anywhere on this, at any angle, and I wanna see that it's relatively flat. Now, I can pretty clearly see that I'm getting rather smooth here, but I can still see some scrub plane marks here, so that means this is probably low. Still see some scrub plane here marks, so this is probably a little low. So it's probably gonna take a few more until I get rid of all the scrub plane marks, but I think we're gonna keep going with the number seven until we get rid of those scrub plane marks. So after about six or so passes with the number seven, we've gotten this relatively flat and smooth. And if I put this on here, it's gonna give us a really nice reading, no matter where we put it, no matter how we put it. I could bring the, the twisting sticks on, to, the winding sticks on here, and I'll be getting right about the same reading. So I know that this is a good, true, flat surface. Now I wanna make it a little more smooth because it's a little bit rough. I had a very deep cut with the number seven. You see a few plane tracks in here. So I'm gonna bring in my number four, this is set up with a fairly fine mouth, and now we can come in, and I'm going to start by traversing 45 degrees one way, and then 45 degrees the other way, and this will allow me to get a little bit smoother surface and get something I'm fairly happy with. And then we're going to come back with the grain and give ourselves a nice clean finish on it. So I went all the way across twice with my number three rather than number four because it was set up a little bit better for it. it takes a little bit longer, but now we've got a really nice clean surface. Uh, there's a few plain marks from previous and there's a little bit of tear out over here and a few other spots like that where if I were to spend the time with four or five more passes with this, it would be perfect and exactly what everyone really, really wants. But this is the underside of the bench, so I'm not gonna take it that much farther. Uh, I just wanna show, really it doesn't take that much as long as you understand what twist is and how everything goes together, they, they flatten up pretty quickly, even with some hand tools. Now we have a really nice flat bench bottom. <laughs> so it's really not one of those things that it, it's that hard, as long as you understand to get the twist out. And then once you have some reference surfaces, you can go on the rest of it. Um, there are some people who work and try and get the twist out through the whole way first, and then they'll come in and smooth it out. Um, I prefer to get reference locations with the, the, the winding sticks and then get point from point to point flatness. I, I find that to be a little bit easier and, and quicker, but there are a hundred different ways to do it. Just remember, always hit the high spots, don't hit the low spots, and that's all there is to flattening, is just being able to find where are those high spots and just hit those high spots. Don't be afraid to go across the grain, 45 degrees to the grain. It allows you to take off a lot of material without much effort into it. But for the final smoothing, you're probably gonna to wanna to go with it. Now, if I really wanted to detail this out, I would get a cabinet scraper or a card scraper and come in here and really specialize on this. But it's a bench. Uh, benches are gonna get beat up. They're gonna get, they're gonna get trashed. So it really doesn't matter that much. Now, if you wanna follow along with all of Sarah's build and, and building this bench, I'll leave a link to that down below. 
Um, don't tell her I did this for her, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, initially we weren't going to flatten the bottom of this, we were just going to do the spots where the legs are at. And that's just as easy as making a mark from the top because the, the, the bottom of this now at the top is actually flattened. We did that on her videos. Um, so we would just make a mark up the side to how far down we want to chisel into the bottom to make them all the same. So it's not that important to flatten your bottoms, but some people like it. Also, if you want to see it, I did a video a while ago flattening my bench top, um, and I showed a little bit different method on that, so it might give you more ideas on that. I'll try and leave a link to that down below as well. So I hope you like this video. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, everyone here on the channel who is supporting by clicking the subscribe button and ringing the bell. Honestly, those things really do help out the channel. Everyone scrolling over to the side are the ones quite literally keeping the lights on and keeping this channel coming. If you'd like to find out more about that, there's a link to Patreon down below, or you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Well, this video may have just fallen flat, but we'll see what the ratings do.